Hello and welcome to my world in a casual review. This time around we're talking about Duke Nukem Forever. I played this game for the first time here in 2023. And uh, I played it via my Xbox One console so I can play the Xbox 360 version via the backwards compatibility feature. Now obviously it's like why did I play the console version? I could have just played the PC version. Well number one xbox achievement scores okay and uh number two i just find it easier to uh play if i'm going to play anything and i want to do things from a very casual minded uh point of view it's better for me to play things on console and i'm and i'm particularly glad i played this on um on console uh because i kind of feel like not having to worry about the mouse and keyboard and uh, some fine uh, jumping with having to hit like a space bar for jump, for example, uh, really worked to this uh, to my to my gameplay uh, experience. Because Duke Nukem Forever, um, it, it it certainly has a lot of influences, and one could understand and see why this game was stuck in development hell for so long. Because it was trying to incorporate as many things from as many different genres as possible. Uh, case in point, and the reason why I have th this particular section here, uh, like uh, ghost, the, uh, the Ghost Town uh, section being uh, highlighted here, is like the way the... Uh, uh, the uh, the big... F the uh, Monster Foot uh, handles... The, the the monster truck is, is kind of quite reminiscent of many vehicle sections from games uh, that you would see in like the mid uh, mid to late uh, early two thousands. So uh, like the uh, like it's almost has it almost has the same physics as say the Mako over in Mass Effect, which instantly came out about the same time, like the roughly the same time period in terms like the same uh, console generation. Now, uh, one of the big th gripes I have with um, with Duke Nukem Forever, it, it, it's not a pretty game. <laughs> it, it it is not. You have this like this gray overtone, gray filter to it. Um, it's it's not. Uh, I'm not sure how much that Call of Duty uh, and uh, Gears of War influence was having on it at that point in time but uh, it, it it is a very murky looking game matter of fact i would dare say duke nukem forever was probably a game that this based visually probably would have been best served if it was released in the playstation 2 or or X, the original xbox and gamecube uh consoles as opposed to like the playstation 3 or the uh, Xbox 360, uh, because it, it's it's not it, it, visually the game has not aged well at all. Gameplay wise, you have enough little gimmicks uh, of items to rotate through, and you get a nice assortment of weapons. Although you can only only hold you can only hold two weapons at a time, so you kind of like gotta commit yourself to one primary weapon and then one secondary weapon that you would obviously switch out depending on the circumstances but um and of course you got like uh, trip mines and pipe bombs to like supplement that uh which made you actually were using those uh weapons that most people probably weren't using in the duke when playing when playing duke nukem 3d but uh with um duke nukem forever you were and i found myself using nearly every single uh 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 tool in duke's uh kit i mean there's like the octa king uh battle uh, i actually end up using the uh the hollow duke as a way of getting through it because i wasn't quite understanding the uh what i needed to do because you had all these other octa octa brains floating around uh the, the uh, the beer with the steroids combination certainly led to being able to over to deal with a lot of squishy enemies up close and personal, uh, 
will, will, will came in handy. And you have to use the sun the Duke Vision sunglasses. That that is almost mandatory to to use in some sections late game because you have very limited lighting. So you um, and you are given various weapons at certain points where you have to use them, and you have to be smart about it, realizing what works against once against the uh, different types of enemies what to you what you know what to use and when to use it and against who to use it so uh, again it's like wow there was certainly a lot here and i was playing this again from a again a very casual uh playthrough i i was uh taking a very casual uh experience uh, uh through it and I, and I found myself having to, like, think outside the box. And I'm not even talking about puzzles yet. There, there are certainly a number of, of puzzles in terms of uh, having to realize, oh, uh, like, oh, you got to go and, and get certain items or move certain items from point A to point B. Uh, there's some, uh, there is some fairly simple uh platform jumping that is in some cases is not as obvious as it may seem but there is there is a lot there um now this all this stuff here all the variety of things that that you get in duke nukem forever um in in that big influence influence of everything that uh, the developers were seeing that they wanted to and try to incorporate in the game um again it, 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 there are, there is also at times it's when the game does feel a little bit disjointed but at the same time it's not boring i mean again from a casual standpoint duke nukem forever is not a boring game because you could be going from a platforming section where you're shrunk down in duke burger and you have to deactivate the electricity to uh, help uh, save someone as well as progress to uh, get to the level uh, and you, again you got some platform jumping your wrong wrong move you end up in a deep fryer and you're having to start over from the last checkpoint you get a fair amount of combat sections you have to realize you have to move items you have to use uh, different you, occasionally you have to use vehicles um, either the uh, uh, forklift or a um, a lifter i think it's what it's called to get to a um, a higher platform you have to carry barrels you have to uh do some weight uh, standard weight puzzles uh, you have to realize what weapons uh again, what weapons can be used against what items and it's like pick up on the patterns of some of the enemies and realize what they do how close uh, do they get uh to where you could do some reasonable uh damage or either up close or or far away i mean it it i mean it is again i i find myself just thinking about it as like it's like i had fun i had fun with duke nukem forever uh which is again that's probably the biggest thing is like did i have fun playing it yeah now the, now, the, now, the thing is, though, would I want to play Duke Nukem Forever again? And it's like, ah, I really don't have the incentive to, having experienced it. I mean, one could say, is, well, you can play it on, the, on a harder difficulty and get, uh, like, achievements that way. It's like, true. I mean, there were certain things that I missed out on uh, as it relates to uh, Duke's uh, ego boost uh, in terms of maxing out his health. So, so there is that aspect to like kind of to really consider um but by and large i'm like i was satisfied if, if i was thinking of it from like a single a simple one and done playthrough i have to say i was i i was particularly satisfied and i got over 50 percent of the achievements on on the on the playthrough so it was like yeah i was like Everything that I reasonably could do in a blind playthrough, like, okay, I, I had a positive experience. Don't really feel that need to play it again. And now the question comes down to, would I recommend Duke Nukem Forever to anyone? Um, Unless you, I do, but only to a certain type of person, and that is if you've played Duke Nukem 3D, 
Um, and you have like a nostalgia for like games from like the from like 2005 to 2012 ish that period of time is like in terms of it yeah i would say yes it'll get like a recommendation from me but for anyone else i would say no unless you unless you're curious about it just want to check it out and play it on like again do it on piece of cake difficulty and get through uh Get through it and enjoy the chaos and mayhem, the various weapons, the various puzzles, and and the gameplay elements. And uh, for the most part, you sh- you would have yourself a good time. Oh, there is one infamous part about this game I do want to touch on real quick before we close out, and that is the overblown uh, uh, monster truck section, which I f- did find to be my favorite part of the game. Uh, you're not stopping for gas every like. Uh, every five like every 30 seconds or 60 seconds no you because you're going from las vegas to hoover dam that's a fair d- distance away and you're driving a monster truck so you're not going to get good met gas mileage anyway and all the stops that may that you hit along the way where you actually have to stop make sense within the context of the vehicle that you're driving and the distance you're having to cover um, but it, it is not as, it is not as bad as other people have said it is. It's a, it is a fairly simple, yeah, you're driving, you're running over enemies, you're, you're popping ramps. And then every so often you run out of gas, you have to find gas to progress. And you have, and, and I will dare say it is my favorite section of the game. More so than a damn underwater section uh, called blowing the dam. That's like an, the next to last thing you have to deal with is like that is the worst section of the game it's like in comparison to uh the to the uh driving section with the uh monster truck uh so with that said uh those are my thoughts and opinions regarding duke nukem forever thank you very much tighten your friendship races stay safe like, comment, subscribe if you're so inclined i know nobody actually does it but uh, you know youtube likes it when i say it And we'll see y'all in the next video, whatever that may be. Bye.